So this is joint work with my colleagues uh, Lukas Pürch and Konrad Rieck from TU Berlin and Christian Resnegger from uh, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. So before starting with machine unlearning, I uh, want to briefly recap what a machine learning task looks like. Um, a machine learning task is usually composed of a data set that is composed of a few data points and each data point is composed of a set of fixed um, features and also each data point has a label um, that we want to predict and with this information you can actually train a model of your choice on this data set to predict labels of unseen data points and depending on your model and the data set at hand uh, this process of training can take um, a lot of time and um, so recently our community has started um, this research field of machine learning which deals with algorithms to actually remove information from such machine learning models. These are necessary to fulfill privacy policies like the GDPR or CCPA. So for example, if you have an, an internet service that uses um, personal data of, of its users, you as a user can claim your right to be forgotten towards the service and um, the service actually has to remove any data of you that it uses um, for his service. Um, and if you, if the service would retrain the model every time you make such a request, it could take a lot of time. Um, so our community dealt um, with so called approximate updates to your model that actually um, unlearn the information in a much faster way. So far, this removal was a cons constrained to um, entire data points that have to be removed. And in our paper, um, we extend this concept of unlearning to features and labels, which allows us to change uh, certain features or labels as depicted in blue in, in this um, plot, or uh, remove entire features as shown in red, which allows us to perform um, specific unlearning tasks like removing um, a single feature that contains private information, for example. So how do we do this? Um, our input for our strategy is given by um, a learning model and its optimal set of parameters, theta star, after training. And what we do is we actually add um, the output of unlearning algorithm u to our optimal parameters to um, perform the unlearning. And um, this algorithm takes two input sets, z and z tilde. z contains the data points that should be changed. So um, the points look like X and Y, the features and the labels, and Z tilde contains the corrected data points. So we add a small delta to, to make um, the changes we want to uh, make happen. And um, then we use as a basis um, a different ingredient, ingredients of the loss function that was used to train the model. So we accumulate um, the gradients on Z and Z tilde in the data sets to obtain this delta, and then propose two strategies. The first one is um, a first order update that only uses this gradient information and a small um, learning rate tau and actually um, pushes out the information um, over z and learns in the information over z tilde and also propose a second order update um, which uses the inverse Hessian matrix H um, and therefore a lot more information that is a lot more accurate but also poses um, a lot more challenge regarding the computation because, uh, for example, the Hessian matrix is quadratic in the size of parameters of a model. So if you have a neural network with millions of parameters, you will have trillions of uh, parameters you have to store and then to invert. So um, you have to make some thoughts how you want to make this happen. And um, another question uh, we have to answer is um, what does it actually mean to unlearn something? And how can we guarantee that something has been unlearned? To this end, um, we propose the concept of certified unlearning in this paper, which is a very strong theoretical guarantee that states that a given uh, model after unlearning is indistinguishable from a, a model that has been retrained from scratch without um, the information to be removed. And, um, we used to, to get this certification, um, this formula shown above, um, a bit simplified. So we actually bound the difference between um, a model after unlearning and one um, that has been retrained. And if this uh, formula looks familiar to you, um, this might well be because um, 
This is inspired by the concept of differential privacy from uh, cryptography, where you have uh, similar tasks. And one of the main results of our paper is um, that you can say that our update strategies are certified, so they perform certified unlearning if the uh, uh, loss function used is convex and the derivatives are bounded. So this is a, a quite strong uh, guarantee, but um, modern neural networks, for example, usually don't have convex loss functions and bounded derivatives. So um, we propose some more evaluation criteria to, to propose or to evaluate unlearning. Uh, the first one is the efficacy, um, where we somehow measure if the information is um, out of the model. Second one is um, fidelity. So the classification performance of the model after unlearning should be very similar to the original one. And of course, uh, efficiency. So the unlearning should be uh, much more faster than retraining the model from scratch. And it is important to, um, to mention that all criteria should hold at the same time. So we don't need uh, fast algorithms that cannot perform unlearning and also don't need algorithms that can perform unlearning and uh, retain the performance but are um, slower than retraining. So um, in the following, I will walk you through uh, two case studies um, from our paper on modern neural networks. Um, the first one is on generative language models and unintended memorization. So um, these language models are actually trained to um, produce language. And in our case, we use a character-based language model that can help you to complete sentences, for example. And um, we train this model on the novel Alice in Wonderland. And during this training process, um, we insert so-called canary sentences into the training data set that have the form, my telephone number is 012999, said Alice. And um, this is inspired by the, by the paper mentioned um, below. And the thing is, if you do this, train the model for a few uh, epochs, and then ask it to complete the sentence, my telephone number is, it will actually give you this telephone number. This is, of course, a huge uh, privacy threat. If you imagine um, like turning um, such a model into production and uh, some adversaries can uh, get telephone numbers or credit card numbers of, of the uh, training data. So our unlearning task in this case is to unlearn um, the memorized numbers by changing features and labels. So for example, we replace um, this number in the training data by some uh, sentence or some other completion. Like for example, my telephone number is not here, said Alice. This has 10 um, characters, so this would be a good fit. And we evaluate um, this unlearning by the exposure metric has, that has been proposed in the paper below and the accuracy on the training data for fidelity. So um, to evaluate the efficacy, we use this exposure metric. Um, I will briefly explain it to you. So if you have the start sentence, my telephone number is, and you want to predict uh, 10 digits, this actually gives you 36 to the 10 possible completions because you have 26 uh, characters and 10 digits. So a lot of uh, completions. And um, to measure how surprised a model is to see uh, such a completion, we use the so-called log perplexity, which is the negative logarithm of a probability to get a certain um, sequence. And if we, for example, sample 10 million um, random completions of this sentence and uh, compute a histogram of the log perplexities, we get um, this, a skew norm distribution that says, OK, the um, average log perplexity of the completion is about 155. Um, that's the mean, approximately. And it looks like this. And now we can ask um, how likely are certain completions of the sentence. For example, um, I used the telephone number of our conference hotel um, as a completion and ask how likely is it. And this is a number that is somewhere left um, between, beneath the mean, um, but still inside the um, distribution of the model. And if you now use the original canary sequence, um, you will see that it's very, very much outside of the common um, distribution. So it's actually the most likely completion of the sentence. And it's really, really strongly memorized by the model because it's really an outlier of the um, complete distribution. So now is the question, um, if we perform our unlearning algorithms, 
and uh, check again what the log perplexity of the sequence is, we actually find that, it's, that it is shifted much more to the right of the distribution. If you wonder why there are three um, lines here in this plot, these are different um, replacements of the original number. So um, these replacements obviously change um, how strongly the memorization is erased. So if you take the, the very right uh, line, we see that now this um, memorized number has become a real outlier. And it is very, very unlikely that the model will predict this um, number. So the, the unlearning was um, successful. The question is now, um, is the model, so it is, uh, yeah, it was um, successful and it's surprisingly simple. So even our first order method that only uses gradient information can perform this unlearning. Um, the remaining question is what about the um, performance of the model and the runtime? Regarding the accuracy, um, we see on the left um, bar plot our methods in blue and some baselines in red. Um, uh, that we can get quite close to retraining, which is given by the dashed uh, gray line. Um, but our success depends on the number of times that we inserted this canary. So the more often you insert it, the stronger the memorization is, of course. And at some point, um, we are not so good anymore. And regarding runtime, we can get, uh, with the first order approach, even uh, two orders of magnitude uh, of saving in runtime, so which, which is really, really uh, fast compared to retraining, for example. Another um, question to ask is uh, possibly what is the completion of the, the most likely completion of the canary after unlearning? So, uh, for example, will the model now predict the replacement, or will it, for example, we uh, predict some gibberish because the model is now broken at this point? And uh, neither of both is true. Um, we see here, for example, some um, some completions of the sentence. My telephone number is. If you take, for example, the number of uh, length 10, we see that the completion is now my telephone number is it, said Alice, that's the beginning, something. So these sentences look really good, um, still close to the distribution of the uh, model, uh, of the novel, Alice in Wonderland, and the punctuation and so on is, is still correct. The second case study, I would uh, very briefly sketch um, the fixing of poisoning attacks which are attacks um, that flip a few labels in the data set and thereby decrease the performance of the model. We use a um, convolutional neural network, a VGG one, for image classification to do this um, and want to unlearn poisoned samples by fixing the labels that have been changed by the adversary. And uh, for evaluation, we use the accuracy on, on test data. And um, we see here, again, the retraining performance as a, a dashed gray line. And the black dashed line in the left plot is actually the performance before unlearning. So the accuracy has been um, reduced by this poisoning attack. And we see that our approaches can, again, um, fix some of these problems, get quite close to retraining, uh, which, again, um, depends on the number of samples we have poisoned. And um, regarding runtime, we still see that we can get roughly two orders of magnitude uh, savings in runtime, which can be, of course, uh, a great can have a great effect in, in terms of power consumption, for example. So finally, uh, some limitations of our methods. Um, as we've seen in the last plots, the size of a number of changes matters. So um, we cannot fix defects of uh, tens of thousands of samples, for example, at one point, um, retraining will become inevitable. Um, our certification currently only holds for convex loss functions, which is not given for uh, modern neural networks. But you could mitigate this problem, for example, if you freeze the um, first part of the network and only use the final layers, which usually have convex loss then. And finally, unlearning requires um, detection. So our approach requires the, uh, the service to know uh, all problems in the data set, which could be quite hard in reality. If you imagine, for example, Google for his mailing completion service has to find all credit card numbers, telephone numbers, social security numbers, and so on in, in its training corpus, could be quite hard. And in conclusion, uh, we proposed two unlearning uh, methods, one that uses only gradient information and is 
quite fast, and another one that uses second order derivatives and is uh, much more accurate, but takes a bit more time to compute. We derive the concept of certified unlearning, which is a very strong theoretical guarantee that information is removed from a model. 